It's not really dangerous, it just requires the utmost of your training to kick in. That's what a captain pilot of a major US airline says about crosswind landing. In this video, you're about to see some of the most dramatic and dangerous crosswind landings in aviation history and so much more. Let's see how these pilots handle their aircraft. A uh, captain pilot? Did he just say a captain pilot? That's what a captain pilot of a major US For the record, if I was flying with someone and they started saying anything like that, I would start laughing. The reality is, is that when you go to flight school, one of the first things you start learning how to do is do crosswind landings. I think maybe at 10 or 15 hours of total flying, that was something that I started to learn how to do. It does take some work, it is definitely a skill that you need to learn, but I wouldn't put it in this category as this crazy thing that we have to do from time to time. Of course, sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you don't. I got sent this video and I was shocked to see that it had over a million views, so we're going to be entertained by a guy who seemed to know nothing about aviation and clear up a few of the misconceptions that he has. And by few, I mean pretty much everything that he says. The first flight's always the hardest. This Chinese student pilot just flew the Cessna plane for the very first time after graduation and things didn't go really well. He did hit two signs in a wide open field before crashing. Don't worry, your rich daddy will get you another airplane. The Cessna plane? It would be okay to just say a Cessna. You wouldn't say my Honda car or my Tesla car. You would just say my Honda or my Tesla. Same thing applies for a plane. You just need to say the type of plane that it is. This guy's obviously still a student pilot or he wouldn't be in this Cessna plane. And then the guy says this. Don't worry, your rich daddy will get you another airplane. Now, I don't know if this guy flying is someone that's Chinese, and this guy who's narrating this video seems like one of those people that would see an Asian person and assume that they're Chinese, but uh, not every Asian person is Chinese. I will, however, agree that this 100% is a terrible landing. I've made a video about it actually a while ago. But if that guy is Chinese, it is true that a lot of Chinese students do come to the US and they learn how to fly. In most cases, those pilots are being trained by the government or by an airline. Uh, rich daddy is not sending them over to go to flight school. So typically what happens is those people get hired and then they get into a program with a specific airline. That airline sends a bunch of people over and they all come together and they learn how to fly. Obviously flying is not for everybody. And to say that every pilot is a spoiled brat, that their parents are going to buy them an airplane, is a little bit crazy. Some people had to ride their bike or take a bus to flight school. Um, that was me. I would ride the bus to flight school just like this so I had money to be able to afford to do everything because flight school is crazy expensive. What's not expensive is buying a microphone off the internet and then collecting a bunch of clips together and sharing a bunch of misinformation that contributes in no way to helping society. Nope, any idiot can do that. We're here in Japan. This pilot just didn't want to go around. Let's see. No matter how hard he tried, he still had to abort the landing. He'd return to try to land again. Everything seemed easier this time. I realize that it has wings and it's the same airline, but it doesn't take a genius to realize that these two planes are not the same type of plane. I mean, even if you didn't know a lot about planes, you would see that there's something different on the end of this wing than the end of this wing. It's all right, I'm sure your rich daddy can buy you some new glasses so you can see these planes just a little bit clearer. Landing in fog is a very challenging experience, especially when you have zero visibility. Wow, if this is not what Faith looks like, I don't know what is. So take what that guy said and basically change it to the exact opposite because landing in fog with very bad visibility is one of the easiest landings you can do 
because the autopilot does the entire landing. Essentially, by this point, the pilots would have set everything up so the plane will do everything, land in the middle of the runway, and actually start stopping the plane. The only thing the pilots have to do is remember to turn off the autopilot. However, there is a lot of training in order to learn how to fly a plane, learn how to work all those systems, and be able to properly monitor the aircraft, so it could be that what he's referring to as very challenging experience is what some would consider contributing to society because you're doing a job that's helping people. My guess is this is what we would call a Cat 3 or a Category 3 landing. And usually during heavy fog like this, the winds are barely moving. It tends to be very calm. So while there is a lot of training, there is really no risk behind it because if anything happens, any anomaly or anything happens that's not supposed to be happening, you just go back up in the air and you try it again. So there's never a situation that you're there thinking, man, I really hope this works out. Nobody's going to be getting in a plane, including myself while I'm flying it, thinking, I hope the runway is here as soon as we get out of the fog. That's not how it would work. You wouldn't pay me enough to risk my life like that. People said Dutch pilots are probably the best ones in the world. Let's see how they prove their talent in this storm. Whoa. Brilliant. People say the Dutch pilots are the best in the world? People said Dutch pilots are probably the best ones in the world. Nope, I don't think anyone says that, and that's no offense to any of the Dutch people. They are very nice. There is no country that makes the best pilots. It's really dependent on that pilot. How hard they study, how hard they try to perfect their craft. All of those things make a good pilot. There's no country that's just producing the best pilots. Except for maybe the U.S. because at the very beginning we were the only people flying. So I guess at that time we were the best pilots because we were the only pilots. Now, however, every country or most countries have some type of an aviation program. So it really comes down to that individual person, how hard they study, how good and how active they are in learning to know their aircraft. That's really what comes down to it and then how good of decisions they make. And there's no one country that's putting out the best decision makers and the best studiers. That's just, there's just no one country that's known for having the best pilots. You could have even made an argument that it would have been smart to do a go around here. But the pilot is wrestling it to the ground in a very windy day. And while this is a good landing of all the words that I might choose for this landing, one of them would not be brilliant. This student pilot on the right was getting a lesson from his coach, Anthony Yen, and everything seemed to be going great. Suddenly, a big shake made them realize that they'd lost one engine. They knew that they needed to land immediately. And they were lucky. There was a cornfield right in front of them. It only took him 49 seconds from engine failure to a safe landing on the ground. That's crazy quick thinking. Experience and composure to pull that off. Excellent piloting. This student pilot was getting a lesson from his coach. This student pilot on the right was getting a lesson from his coach. These coaches are called flight instructors, and he didn't lose a engine. That they lost one engine. They lost their only engine, which is kind of a problem, but they did do a great job getting it down to the ground. You can see here the plane is coming down at a slight angle, which I'm guessing there's some crosswind, but we have no reference to see everything. As they touched down, if they had straightened it out a little bit, it would have been a lot smoother landing. And that's why on commercial aircraft, they have at least two engines, so that way if one were to fail, you're able to safely get to an airport and safely land. Uh, I fly with fours, so that gives me twice the amount of mistakes that a normal pilot can make, which is pretty much what I need. The brutal weather at Hamburg Airport couldn't stop the Boeing 747 from taking off. The Silkway aircraft indeed left an interesting Silkway of water right after takeoff. Yes, commercial airplanes are able to take off in the rain. It's crazy. The brutal weather at Hamburg Airport couldn't stop the Boeing 747 from taking off. There are a lot worse situations that you'll see planes taking off in. A lot of time, plane spotters just wouldn't be out there because it'd be such a horrible condition. So I don't blame them. I wouldn't stand out there either. Runways are always designed to extend themselves in front of a moving airplane. But this aero circuit has almost run off the runway and can hardly take off. Did you see that super low pass? It almost hit those people on the ground. 
These Colombian guys are super brave to even stand there. Aerocirque is an infamous cargo airline that has been involved in several accidents and incidents due to the overweight carriage and reckless behavior of its pilots. What? The runways are designed to move themselves forward in front of the plane? Runways are always designed to extend themselves in front of a moving airplane. And these guys standing right in the departure corridor of an aircraft is not what I would call brave. If something were to come off this plane, whether it be a tire or anything else, these guys are going to be in a lot of trouble. And the airline is called Aerosucre, not whatever you're calling it. But this Aerocirque has almost run off the runway and can hardly take off. And as for this statement right here, Aerocirque is an infamous cargo airline that has been involved in several accidents and incidents due to the overweight carriage and reckless behavior of its pilots. That doesn't add at all to your story, and all it does is make less of these pilots, and some of whom lost their lives. That's the type of person that would probably take a word like infamous and say it like this. Infamous Unless you've investigated air crashes and know anything about aviation, you really shouldn't be talking about this. Some of these people lost their lives. Pilots, especially cargo pilots, aren't necessarily aware of how much cargo is being loaded on their aircraft. I get a piece of paper and it says, this is how much freight is loaded on there. Are there times that I get a piece of paper and it's a totally different weight? I don't know. I don't weigh it all when I take off and I don't weigh it when I land. So there's no way for me to know that. There's no way for some pilots to know that. Now, it is possible that these pilots knew in some cases that they were taking off overweight. And in some cases, the airline might have told them, you're going to take off overweight or we're going to fire you if you don't do it. That wouldn't happen in the U.S. because if that were to happen, that airline would get shut down. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened in any of the Aerosucre accidents, but it's possible in some countries that pilots are being forced to do something they're not comfortable with, and there have been cases of that. So it's unfair to say that these pilots were reckless in making a poor decision, when in some cases they may not even be aware of it. There have been cases of cargo planes taking off with extra things on that plane where they had no idea that it was on there, and they had no way to even know. If I see a big pallet of stuff that's on my plane, I have no way to know how much the things weigh on there. So there have been cases where the planes burn a lot of extra fuel, and when they go to investigate, they realize, oh, the loaders put this wrong thing on this cargo plane, and it actually weighed three times more than they thought it did. Oops. So that's not really the pilot's fault. When you say things like this, due to the overweight carriage and reckless behavior of its pilots, it makes you sound like a real dick, because you don't know at all what you're talking about. Look at this crazy wind. I'd have a heart attack if I were the captain of that flight. That turbulence was insane. Well, there's a reason that you're not the captain of that plane, or, or hopefully probably any plane, and, and that wasn't turbulence. Sometimes the movement is coming from the pilots themselves, but as you can see, this windsock is coming more or less right down the runway. But what can happen in different airports is you can create a swirling environment, especially when you get towards the approach end of a, of a runway. You can have a swirling situation, which can in some cases cause the wing to go up, or you can be making a correction. I don't know because I can't see from what the pilots are seeing in there. So I don't really know if that was pilot induced or that was wind that was created for some type of a swirling situation. I don't really know, but sometimes you have the pilots that are trying to make a correction there. What I do know is that is not turbulence. This pilot did do a great job though, getting this down in the touchdown zone, despite all that turbulence they had to go through. Look at how slippery it is in that smoke trail. But this pilot from Uruguay Air Force has managed to pull it off. Nicely done. Smoke trail? So the plane is on fire here and that smoke that's coming out the back of it. Is that what you're saying? Any other guesses of what it could possibly be when they're landing on a runway? This Boeing 777 was trying to land at Itami Airport during a storm. Look at that shake. It's practically impossible to land and the pilot had to abort the landing last minute. He went back for another try, and the wind was still blowing crazily. Look at that turbulence. But yes, he won the weather this time. For those of you who 
don't want to sound stupid, you can call it a Boeing 777, that's usually what people refer to it as, or a 777, but nobody refers to it as a Boeing 777. Next, it's important to know that this is a bank and not a shake. I'm not sure if you were saying that it was impossible to land once they did their shake, or that they made the right decision, but they did make the right decision. When your plane becomes unstable like that, close to the runway, the right decision is to do a go-around. You could force the landing, you could make it work if you really had to, but that's not the safest choice. So after any type of shake, you're gonna wanna do a go-around. And you're saying that this plane and crew at this airport is the same plane and crew that's doing it on the second attempt in this video right here. Seriously? Here's another stormy landing of a Boeing 747 during Storm Angus in Amsterdam 2016. Ooh, look at that wind in that landing. It's like he's letting the wind drive that plane onto the runway. Look at that wind. It, can you tell me exactly what it is that I'm looking for when I'm looking for that wind? Ooh, look at that wind in that landing. It definitely does take some skill on stronger crosswinds or heavy winds as you get your plane to land on the runway. But at no point do I ever say, man, that plane really uh, got driven onto the runway so smoothly from the wind. The wind didn't do anything. The pilots did something to get the plane safely on the runway. I, I don't really understand even what you're saying here. You're just saying words now. Student pilot got this helicopter to take off without clearance during an auto rotation practice, and now he's trying to land. Whoops, if he went down just a few seconds sooner, he would have crashed into that plane below. That was super close. All right, so you are just putting words together. So what you're saying is a student pilot got this helicopter pilot to take off. That's what you're saying here. Student pilot got this helicopter to take off without clearance. And that after convincing this guy to do this unapproved departure, he then wants him to do an auto rotation, which is to simulate an engine failure, and then was to simulate this engine failure over another plane after that other student pilot got that guy to take off. Air traffic control is not involved in any of this, by the way. This thing that he's doing is called an auto rotation, which is when the helicopter practices an engine failure to get down onto the runway. We do that training as a fixed wing pilot. They do a simulated engine failure. It's a normal part of going through flight school. So it is part of it, but clearly what this guy's saying is he doesn't know at all what he's talking about. And if you can believe it, we're only halfway through the video, but that's all the time I'm willing to spend on this guy for this day. I got some studying to do. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.